Um, how does that rally sustain itself when you do have higher yields? You did not have an ECB uh, over the last two weeks buying bonds in their PEP program. What's the case for European equities, if any? It's a really tough one to make. Um, we, we are, I think, concerned about European equities, about European assets in general. Um, you know, we look at the macro backdrop and it's not performing as well as I think many people were hoping. Uh, the vaccine rollout has been disappointingly slow and doesn't really show many signs of acceleration in the same way that we've been uh, seeing in many other countries. Uh, and then, as you said, you know, the, the tightening in U.S. financial conditions is also meaning that European conditions are also tightening, which Europe simply cannot cannot afford. It doesn't have the same kind of fiscal stimulus package that the U.S. is about to enjoy. So I think we do have um, a lot of hesitation with regards to European equities right now. See, but what about internationally focused European invest, uh, in investments. Um, you have a cheaper euro. Right? We're at 118 today. Um, you've got a global economy that is picking up quite nicely. Anybody with exposure to the US economy should benefit in terms of the translation effect. Uh, you've got oil prices that are up. You've got a steep yield curve, which also should favour European banks. Isn't there quite a case to be made, actually, for individual sectors to outperform here? Yeah, I think, I think that is key. So I think from a, a sectoral perspective, we do think that European banks will outperform. You know, that, that steepening yield curve is very favourable for the banking sector. But I think overall, you know, if we had to pick on a relative basis which region we want to be having that significant exposure to, unfortunately, at the moment, it's not Europe. I think it's still that the US is looking like the outperformer. And really, when we look at international equities, more generally speaking, um, although at the beginning of this year, it was all to play for for international equities, the truth is that the US is really outperforming everyone. It looks like it's going to be the strongest performer for, for 2021. So actually, a lot of the other regions which are looking pretty good at the beginning of the year are starting to pale in comparison to the US. But if you're looking at tightening financial conditions, why wouldn't that be the case for the US? If the dollar gets stronger, yields rise, etc. When does that actually hurt? No, and I, I agree. I mean, I think that's a really is a key question for investors is at what point does that rise in yields become too difficult? I think within the US, there is a real case for rotation. Uh, you know, we need to be looking at, at value stocks. We need to be looking at more cyclicals. Um, you know, the ones that have done particularly well are starting to struggle. Uh, but, you know, they do have the stronger economic outlook. That US fiscal stimulus package is so it's so significant that it's really that's a reason why you've seen so many growth forecasts be upgraded in the last few weeks. You know, we um, we started with our baseline scenario of a 4.8% growth rate for the US. We've shifted that up to the 6% level. You know, many others have, and I think that's down to the fiscal stimulus. That's the edge that the US has that, unfortunately, Europe just doesn't. See, but what do you do with Chinese stocks? What do you do with emerging markets more broadly? Uh, EM currency is starting to roll over in a fairly significant way as the dollar gains traction. Uh, Chinese stocks, I think, are down, like the CSI is down circa 15% over the last few days. We're starting to see some real money moving uh, around in the emerging markets. I'm assuming that it's flooding back towards the United States. How tough a trade is this going to be, particularly for those China stocks? Yeah, uh, you know, and this is, I guess, what I'm regards to with when I talk about international stocks. There was, you know, the consensus trade was that emerging markets would have a fantastic 2021. Um, and that was really reliant on this idea that the dollar would be uh, that much weaker through 2021. It's not the case. And I think the reason is, again, it's a U.S. growth outperformance. It's meaning that the downside for the dollar is extremely quite limited at the moment. We, we think that there is at least a case to be made potentially for a stronger dollar which means that for EM currencies, um, it's not quite such a pretty story as it began. Uh, I can say that for the, for the China side, the growth is a little bit disappointing and actually looks like it could be an underperformer for this year for the first time in, in quite a long time. But aren't the two stories linked? Because of the idea is you like U.S. equities, we get almost a $2 trillion stimulus. We're going to go out and buy stuff. A lot of that stuff is still made in China uh, or you need components from China to make it. I mean, why wouldn't that rising tide then lift all boats? I think it right. It, so let me get it straight. It, it's it's it is certainly positive for everywhere, right? The U.S. economy, as the largest economy, which depending on which measure you want to use, is clearly going to lift global growth.
it's, it's down to that fiscal stimulus package. Um, you know, their COVID vaccine uh, rollout has also been very impressive. So we're looking at a reopening in the US economy, which is actually already underway. Um, and this is far ahead of most other countries. So we do need to consider that that, that change. Now, the, the one element here, which is, you know, potentially the game changer, is, of course, that rise in yields. At what point do, do equities start to feel really suffocated? Um, I don't think we're there yet, and a lot has to be playful with the with the FOMC meeting next week. Yep. Um, but we do think that, that you know, equities will outperform in a strong growth environment. Seema, um, as, as yields go higher, tech is suffering. Is there a point, and at what point does it come, where that trade has gone too far? These are, particularly with the big tech companies, hugely, hugely um, positive companies when it comes to earnings. Uh, they have an ESG factor attached to them in many cases. I, at what point do you think this, this kind of tech selling period is going to come to an end? You know, this is, I, I'd say, I mean, this is the, the main question that we're getting at the moment. Uh, we have been very pro-tech uh, for a long period, and we have come into this, you know, looking at it as it's a secular trade. It's something which is has got so much growth potential. These are strong balance sheets, companies uh, with a lot of potential going forward as well. But this is a difficult environment for them. Uh, now, once we've had that peak in bond deals, which we do think will come in the relatively near future, but once that comes, then tech again looks like a bit of a buy. But there's no denying that this is a very, very difficult um, period for this sector, which has clearly outperformed over the last year.